Good morning and welcome once again to another moment in the Word. We're continuing in John 15. I pray that these words are encouraging to you, and yet as we look at them, they can be quite disturbing. They're disturbing because our Lord is telling his disciples that he is leaving and that he is coming back. They're certainly encouraging words. But he is also telling them that while he is gone, the world will hate them. That's a key word that we find in this entire section of John chapter 15. He said, if you were of the world, the world would love you, but the world will hate you. And know that it hated me first, and the reason why they will hate you is because you're not of the world. The passage we're looking at now is in verse 22 and continuing. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they'd have no sin. But now have I spoken, they have no cloak for their sin. Jesus had said in the prior verse that the reason why he is hated is because they do not know the Father. They, meaning the world, the non-believer, a person that doesn't know Jesus as personal Savior. They will hate the Father, therefore they're hating the Son. Remember, Jesus is God who has come in the flesh. He's explaining now that the reason why the world will hate Christ is because God and Jesus are one. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. The reason why the world will hate the Christian is because Christ and the Christian are one, just as the vine and the branches. We're connected. You've seen Christ. You've seen Christ in the believer, the hope of the world is in the believer who shows Christ. But now he goes on to say there are two reasons why the world is without excuse. Excuse of their sin. It doesn't mean they didn't have sin prior. It means that their guilt is exposed as a result of Christ coming into the world. The two reasons are, first of all, if I had not come and spoken to them, they'd have no cloak for their sin. They'd have a way of excusing and saying, well, I just didn't know. Well, the fact of the matter is, all of John is like a lawyer's brief. It will give you seven arguments that Jesus is God. And it will be in seven words that they all begin with, I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. All of those I am's are statements that God made of himself. He reveals the Father. And so he says, there is a testimony in my word that I am God. But then he goes on to say, if they didn't believe my word, then they could believe my works. Nobody did works like Jesus. Jesus, everywhere he went, did only good, and the good was making the blind to see, the lame to walk, and even the dead to rise from the grave. He did those things, but the purpose of doing them was so that he would reveal the Father. And so hating Jesus is to hate the Father. Now that's the problem. In fact, Paul argues the same thing in Romans chapter 1. He says that all of creation reveals the power and the Godhead. They are therefore without excuse. And because man suppresses the truth in ungodliness, we become more ungodly as a, cre as a culture when we reject God. We start to worship the creation rather than the creator. And that's what we're witnessing today. So he goes on to say, but... It will come to pass that the word is fulfilled that is written in their law. In Psalms, in two places, they hated me without a cause. Why did they hate Jesus? And we still see it today. No one hates Buddha or Confucius or Lao Tzu or Muhammad the way people hate Jesus. No one takes their name in vain as Jesus has his name taken in vain. Why? There is a spiritual warfare that is going on in our world, and that war is against God, the Creator, and the Redeemer. Remember, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. 
that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. Why do they hate him without a cause? Because they don't want to face their sin. It's guilt that drives people to hate Jesus. We want the darkness. We hate the light. The light exposes the darkness. Therefore, unrighteousness rejects the righteous one, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've identified yourself with Christ, understand you will be despised. You will be rejected. You will be shunned. You will be put down. You will be spit on. You may even pay with your life for the testimony of Jesus, but also recognize because he lives, you live also. And you know the truth and you know the promise of God's word. Therefore, you have strength to live and to witness to the truth today. I pray you're blessed. I pray you're encouraged. These are difficult words, but I remind you with the last word of chapter 16. In the world, you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much that you have sent your son that I might know that I have sinned, that I might know that my real problem is sin, and that as a result, I can repent. And we pray, Father, that everyone listening might have the same knowledge and the same experience and the same contrition, the same brokenness and the same confession that Jesus is Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen.